people that have come to join us here at this day, and for our ancestors who came before us, and for our ancestors who are, are coming on after we leave this world. I want to thank you for everything that you've given us in this life, all of our friends, and everything that we need, and our family. Thank you. Thank you very much for all of these beautiful things. We're here today to remember our ancestors and the sacrifices that they made for us so that your people can carry on in your, in your vision that you had for us. But oh, Thank you, Johnny Daikon. He is up here as an artist and a, a member of the Creek Nation. We appreciate that so much. And uh, now we're going to have our flautist perform. Gabby is coming here in just a second as soon as she finishes our social media outreach. <laughs> <laughs> Slight pause. Just as a filler here, Gabby is from Farmington and she and her mother Diana are part of the church Nation. So Easter Bay. Gabby, that was beautiful. I really appreciate you coming. We all are very honored to have you here and to play for us again at the University of Arkansas, so thank you. Um, 
is my honor and pleasure to welcome Mayor Jordan, Lionel Jordan, again. He attends every year and has been very generous to us as an organization, a Native American student organization, the Native American Symposium, and a supporter of all that we do. He's made this city welcoming to all cultures and to all people, and we celebrate diversity here in Fayetteville in partly, a lot, not even partly, due to his efforts to make that happen in our community. So, Mayor Jordan, thank you again, and please come forward and proclaim our day. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor and a privilege for me to uh, be able to do this again and celebrate with you Indigenous Peoples Day in the great city of Federal Arkansas, where we believe in uh, equality, diversity, and inclusion for everyone. We believe in a partnership-based government. We're all part owners together, and we move this city forward together. Am I right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. So today I bring the following proclamation. For as Indigenous Peoples Day began in 2004, and Dr. Nick Bennett is here today. Nick, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. The founder of the Omni Center for Peace, Justice, Ecology, and Federal recommended that the University of Arkansas host an observance and recognition of Indigenous Peoples Day, whereas each year we meet at the Trail of Tears Memorial marker in Federal to celebrate Indigenous people and remember the Trail of Tears, which was the result of federal legislation declaring that no foreign government, which included American Indian tribes, could be physically located within the borders of the United States of America. And any tribe that failed to disband or move of its own accord to the specially designated Indian Territory of present-day Oklahoma was forcibly removed by federal forces. And whereas thousands of people died during this thousand mile journey over the Trail of Tears, collective reference to many paths used by the Cherokee, Choctaw, Creek, Chickasaw, and Seminole nations when they were forced west and the forced removal of American Indians over the Trail of Tears is one of America's greatest tragedies. And whereas John Finch led 1,100 Cherokees from their homelands in Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee through the frontier village of Federal, Arkansas to Indian Territory, as part of the forced removal of nearly 13,000 Cherokees ordered by President Andrew Jackson and the United States Congress and this group of weary, homeless Cherokees camped on the hillside north and east of the historic federal marker, securing supplies and repairing wagons before heading west to Cane Hill the next day and on to Indian Territory, arriving there in January 17, 1839. Now therefore, I, Lionel Jordan, Mayor of the great city of Federal, Arkansas, who hereby proclaim October 10, 2016 as Indigenous Peoples of the Americas Day in the great city of Federal, Arkansas, and I urge all citizens to join me in focusing on the Trail of Tears in Federal and Northwest Arkansas today. Thank you all. Thank you all for doing this. Morgan, the president of our Native American Student Association, and she is going to introduce for you our next guest. We're going to hear a little bit about the modern Trail of Tears from um, our dean of the law school, Stacy Lee. So, Olivia. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Hello.
kind of shorter than all you guys. Um, hi, I'm Olivia Morgan again. Um, I see some faces I haven't met yet, so hopefully I can meet you later on. Uh, I'm the president of the Native American Student Association, and I'm here to introduce Dean Stacy Leeds, and we should take over mic. What's the owner, God? Stacy Leeds, Dr. Bella. My name is Stacy Leeds, and I am the Dean of the Law School here at the University of Arkansas. And I just want to take a few minutes, um, first and foremost, to thank for the leadership. Uh, Mayor, thank you for always being here. Dr. Bennett, for the long haul, thank you for your leadership. And of course, Freddie, a long-term student advisor to our Native Students Organization. Um, I just wanted to convey on behalf of the faculty and the administration here at the University of Arkansas how incredibly proud we are of our students for continuing to put their efforts into making this um, day part of our collective histories here at the University of Arkansas. I think it's a prof profound um, fact that we all work and live and go to school on a campus that was once a campsite during the Trail of Tears. But what I want to leave us with today, because I know we're going to hear a little bit about the history of this campsite, is that uh, John Bench, the conductor that you're going to hear about here in just a moment, uh, many people think of the Trail of Tears, and they think of tribes as victims of genocidal atrocities from removal from their homeland. But what I think is so valuable when we um, continue to do this uh, historical um, commemoration, reflection, and celebration is that John Binge was one of several conductors, 13 overland conductors, that was a Cherokee leader of their own dispatch. We think of the Trail of Tears and the artwork that commemorates it, and we think about federal troops forcing our people to uh, Indian territory, when in fact the Cherokees and other tribes along the way, but particularly the Cherokees, did the one thing that we always do as modern people. And when something that you can't control happens, you have as much control over it as you absolutely can. And most people don't realize that the Cherokees negotiated to control their own removal. So it wasn't federal troops, but John Bennett, a Cherokee, that was the leader bringing our people right through this location. And um, to, to be on this campus and to look over at our stadium and all of the beautiful academic buildings here and to know of that rich history, what I want us all to walk away with today is that yes, we uh, take this day to reflect. We reflect on the indigenous populations that were here in Arkansas, like the Caddo, like the Osage, Quapaw, that this was their indigenous homelands. And then we reflect and celebrate those that came later, the Cherokees, Chickasaws, Seminoles, Muscogee Creek, all walk through these lands on their way um, to their current homelands. And I say current homelands because there are current homelands, territories, jurisdictional boundaries that are not a thing of the past, but of a, a living um, sovereign nation and, and tribal governments that exist today. So when you think about the Cherokees of the Trail of Tears, do that. But um, also think of the Cherokees that are doctors and lawyers and mothers and artists that will carry us on to the multiple um, generations that will follow. Um, with that, I will leave you for uh, the reflection and the celebration of the day. I know that we have some um, other tribal representatives in the audience of uh, not necessarily indigenous to Arkansas, but they're now very much part of our community. So if there are tribes present today that I did not just mention, tell us who you are. Dene, Navajo. We have Dene, Navajo, here on campus as our students and employees of the law school. <laughs> Any other tribes I didn't mention? Hopi, Hopi. Okay. Thank you all very much, and um, uh, good luck as you go forward in the future. Thank you. Most of, most of you are a little earlier about the binge detachment. Uh, is there anyone here today whose name is binge? We have students and have had students at least at the University of Arkansas who are binge um, descendants. I knew one who was my brother's best friend, friend years ago named Mike Binge. Unfortunately, I've lost track of him. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, I've told you a little bit about the fact that the detachment left uh, Fort Payne, Tennessee, at, on, uh, I mean, yes, where's it was? <laughs> I told you where it was. 
in September and they got here by January and that they had 60 wagons and 400 people. Um, they actually started from Alabama. That's where Fort Payne is. It's near Wills Valley, uh, Alabama. They traveled up the Tennessee River and then they went quite a few ways further north. They crossed the Mississippi River at Columbus, Kentucky. That's across from Belleville, Missouri. And about 30 or 40 years ago, I went on a ferry from Belleville, Missouri to Columbus, Kentucky, and I had no idea that was where the all of the Cherokee detachments crossed the river on ferries. But instead of going on up and hitting Interstate 44, and then coming down to Springfield and to Springdale, and then taking the right-hand fork at Springdale to go to Westville, this one detachment came across the river and then came down and came across northern Arkansas, which I had mentioned before. The U.S. government allowed $66.24 for each person for 80 days of travel, and that wasn't adequate for even the binge detachment who were fairly wealthy. They traveled 768 miles in 106 days, averaging about 10 miles a day. They were one of the quickest detachments uh, to move across that uh, thousand mile, nearly a thousand miles. Uh, we know something about them because they bought so many things along the way. Uh, they bought, they had to buy supplies for themselves and their horses. And I've said this before, I believe, at this very spot. Do you know what the thing, other than food and horse storage, that was, that the Cherokees purchased the most on the Trail of Tears? It was soap. They bought more soap than they bought anything else other than food and horse forage for their horses. And uh, I don't believe they bought any cabins. So they were really trying to be clean as they came across. And that's one thing that people really don't know. Now, they camped here. They had covered wagons, so they could they could sleep in covered wagons. They would have been all up this hill. But also, the tents, like uh, if you've ever seen a Civil War photograph, those white tents, they would have had those. Certainly no teepees. I don't have to tell anybody here today, no teepees. But sometimes we've had a large contingent of students from some class. And I've told them that. And from here they went on to Westville, as I said before. Um, there's a lot of talk about the, the detachments coming across in the winter. The first four detachments were led by the U.S. Army. They came in June. They came through the Mississippi River Valley, and really they had more deaths than any other detachments. There was not only the swamps, but there was malaria, there was a cholera epidemic in Memphis at that time. The Choctaws had had to come near Memphis, and all of them had suffered, all of the different groups of Choctaws had suffered from losses from cholera. So the Cherokees went very far north and then came back down. That describes why they took such a northern route. This one band that came across uh, northern Arkansas are the ones who camped on our campus, so they're the ones that we'd like to think about the most and what it would have been like for them to come through here. I'm really not going to tell you any more about that. If anybody wants any more information, I have some sheets here, and you can take one with you if you want to, either a real short description or a little bit longer. Right now, I would like to introduce uh, <clears throat> Bethany Rosenbaum, who will be the president of the... Um, Arkansas chapter of the Trail of Tears Association, which is an association that aids the National Park Service in the upkeep and research and so on that, to go along with the Cherokee Trail of Tears National Historic Trail. She's also a graduate student, history department, is that right? Yes. And so she's going to tell you a little bit more about why we're here today. Gloria took my entire introduction, so uh, my name is Bethany Rosenbaum, and as Gloria mentioned, I will be the upcoming president of the uh, Trail of Tears Association in Arkansas, and um, as it, it's fitting that I would speak to you at the end, as um, my goal is to really bring it 
full circle to what we're doing today to preserve and commemorate the Trail of Tears. And not just for the Cherokee, but all of the removal stories of indigenous people. Um, so our focus in the Arkansas Trail of Tears Association is to highlight, commemorate, and, and remember the tragedy of the trail, but to shed light on the tenacity of the Cherokee people and, and the legacy that came out of that tragedy from tragedy to tenacity. And I want to I want to share with you briefly about um, why we're here, this this place, and what sacred space means to the Cherokee people. So the Creator handed down living light, fire, to Kitoa, who distributed it to seven Cherokee men. Those Cherokee men kept the living fire and took it to different Cherokee towns, townships. Those townships is what we call mother towns. The Cherokee believed that as long as that living fire was still burning and still lit, that the Cherokee people remained, that they were strong. So you can imagine that as the Cherokee were forcibly removed from their homelands in Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, that that fire, the living fire that they believed was a connection between the Creator and the Earth, was removed from that, from that ancestral land. But the tenacity, again, of this story from tragedy to legacy is that the Cherokee people still have a living fire today. That they, when they, re, when they re relocated to Indian Territory, created a courthouse system, they replicated the civilized structure that they had already created in Georgia, a new constitution, and continued to rebuild their community. I also wanted to point out that the removal story is not just, it, it, it contains many multi-ethnic communities, as um, not only were the Cherokee removed, but their property, and they were each given an allotment of property to bring with them. That also included, at the time, um, slaves. So it's something that um, historians and scholars are uh, beginning to take interest in, is this multi-ethnic story of removal um, and how different communities were, were taken um, to Indian Territory. Now, in the Trail of Tears Association, um, our goal is to work with the National Park Service to preserve and commemorate the Trail of Tears. It, the National Trail of Tears Association covers nine states of which the, the trail uh, came through. We work with local and state officials to um, give programs, educational materials, uh, to um, create monuments and structures, as well as wayside exhibits to educate the public on that site. So I think um, I, wanna, I want to thank the Native American Student Association and those on campus that are supportive of this effort, um, because it really is our generation that is taking this forward, making it known for the future generation, to not only just to commemorate it, but to educate the public on its, on the legacy and how um, the Cherokee people survived and, and created um, a strong community even after the forcible removal uh, designated by the federal government. So I just wanted to say thank you for um, this moment and thank you for bringing all of us together. And I appreciate you inviting me to speak. If you'd like any materials on the Trail of Tears or are interested in joining our efforts to preserve this time, um, please, please see me. Thank you. Well, I'd like to ask everyone again to thank all of our guests for making this another memorable commemoration uh, for the removal and to also add that I recognize the, the spiritual nature of this moment as you were saying that Bethany I'm thinking of all the souls that have passed through this way and that is an honor to be here and to remember them as well and to keep the fire alive through your generation and the generations to come and I would like to recognize all of our youth that are here too and ask them to remember and to carry this message forward. Um, we're going to close with another song from Gabby. So thank you all again and one more round of applause for our guests. Thank you.
this on dry because I forgot my MP3 player in my jacket and I took off my jacket and I left it in the truck and my brother should be bringing... Okay. <laughs> and my brother should be drink, uh, bringing my jacket but my brothers like walk really slow and so, you know, I'm just gonna be playing this song dry. Hi again. Um, I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, couldn't have done this without um, all of you and also our members of the Native American Student Association. Um, and we hope to continue this effort um, with Trail Tears Walk and uh, readings and remem remembering what happened and why we're here and remembering our past but also bringing it forth what we've been talking about and reiterating that 